attacked on the Israeli side by His Excellency Mr. Daniel Kalman, Ambassador of Israel, and on the Indian side by Sri Shashi Shekhar, Secretary, Ministry of Water Resources, River Development, and Ganga Rejuvenation. May I re request the two officials to please step forward? Thank you. The second agreement to be exchanged is the Declaration of Intent on Cooperation in the Field of Agriculture. This will be exchanged on the Israeli side by Ambassador His Excellency Mr. Daniel Kalman, and on the Indian side by Additional Secretary DARE and Secretary ICAR Sri Chabilendra Raul. Please. Excellencies, this concludes the exchange of agreement ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now have press statements by the two leaders. May I first invite the Prime Minister of India, Sri Narin Modi, to deliver his press remarks. Your Excellency, President Ruben Rivlin, and friends on media, I am honored to welcome President Ruben Rivlin and distinguished members of his delegation to India. President Rivlin is on his first ever visit to India. We are delighted to receive him on this special occasion. Excellency, your visit will provide crucial push to our efforts to build new pillars in our partnership. It will also carry forward the momentum generated by the first ever visit of President of India to Israel last year. Next year, both countries will be celebrating 25 years of the establishment of full dil diplomatic relations. As we approach this big milestone, we are both committed to advance our engagement on several fronts and build on convergence and commonalities in our interests and concerns on regional and global issues. Friends, our engagement is multi-dimensional and wider ranging. We are partnering in enhancing agriculture productivity and efficiency, boosting research and innovation linkages, employing applications of science and technology for the benefit of our societies, forging strong trade links and investment ties, building defense ties to secure our people, and en enhancing people-to-people -people ties through greater cultural and tourism linkages, promoting educational exchanges, the growing number of Indian students going to study in Israel and vice versa can be an important bridge in our partnership. The growing number of Indian students going to study in Israel will be an important bridge for building our partnership. Friends, earlier today, in our discussions, President Rivlin and I agreed that there are several strong areas of ongoing cooperation between our countries. We are familiar with Israel's advances in agriculture and its expertise in micro-irrigation, in drought-prone areas and water management. We have identified 
water management and water conservation and collaboration in scientific research and development as two areas of priority eng engagement. We both agreed that the current trajectory of the Indian economy opens up many promising opportunities for Israeli companies. Our economic initiatives and programs and emphasis on innovation, research, and technological development match well with Israel's strengths and capacities. Israeli companies can scale up their tie-ups tie with our flagship schemes of Make in India, Digital India, Skill India, and Smart Cities. I would encourage the private sector stakeholders on both sides to take lead in utilizing this perfect opportunity to build business ties of commerce and investment between our two countries of these areas. Indian and Israel companies can also work together in high technology manufacturing and services sector. Make in India. And as a President Rivlin told me in our discussion, make with India can generate jobs and benefit both geographies. Its services is an area where our partnership can make a difference for our both our economies. Friends, President Rivlin and I deeply value our strong and growing partnership to secure our societies. Our people are constantly threatened by forces of terrorism and extremism. We recognize that terrorism is a global challenge, knows no boundaries, had extensive links with other forms of organized crime. Regrettably, one of the countries of its origin and spread is in India's neighborhood. We agreed that the international community must act with resolve and determination against terror networks and states that harbor them. Failure to act and silence of speech only encourages the terrorists. We agreed to intensify our cooperation to combat the forces of extremism and radicalization that threaten all peace-loving nations. We also prioritize practical and specific engagement such as in the cyber domain. We noted the strength of our growing defense partnership and agreed on the need to make it more broad-based through production and manufacturing partnerships. India is also grateful to Israel for its support to India's permanent candidature in a reform UN Security Council. Friends, as fellow democracies, our people are our biggest strength and the biggest beneficiaries of a strong India-Israel partnership. The 2,000-year-old Jewish community in India represents a thriving link to this past. Today, it is a vital part of our composite cultural mosaic that continues the thrive in their traditions. We are proud of the Jewish community in India. President and I agreed that promoting people-to-people -people contacts, which has a long history in our shared priority, Excellency, 
two and a half decades of our parent friendship has brought rich dividends for both our nations. It has also strengthened voice of peace, stability, and democracy globally. Your visit provides an opportunity to break new ground and shape new contours of our partnership. With these words, I once again welcome President Rivlin on his first state visit to India and wish him a productive and enjoyable stay in India. Thank you. I thank Prime Minister for his statement. May I now invite His Excellency Mr. Reuben Rivlin, President of the State of Israel, to deliver his press remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Prime Minister Modi. Thank, thank you to all, to all the people of this great nation for your warm, warm welcome and hospitality. Together with my wife, Nehama, I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. You have made us feel truly at home in your beautiful country. Mr. Prime Minister, Israel and India have changed history before, and it is time we do it again. We have growing cooperation in agriculture, in water, in solar power, in all of what you call the four-colored revolution and many more areas as well. As we mark 25 years of our diplomatic relation, this is not just a partnership that we talk about. This is a partnership which is making the, a difference for Israelis and Indians in the water we drink, in the food we eat, in the te technology we use, and many important areas of our lives. Prime Minister Modi, you have called on the world to make in India. I'm here to say Israel is ready to answer this call. Israel is ready to make in India and to make with India. Israel is very proud of its innovation. We are proud of our ability to make ideas into reality, to make dreams come true. While I am here in your wonderful country, I look forward to seeing with my own eyes how Israeli innovation and Indian industrial power are working all together. It is a source of great pride and our best hope for the future, the mutual future of the entire world. Mr. Prime Minister, on my visit, I will also pay my respect at the sites of terror attacks which claimed the lives of both of our peoples. Israel and India are threatened by terror because we uphold the values of freedom. My dear Mr. Prime Minister Modi, we share our desire for peace and security. Nothing can justify terror. Terror is terror is terror. We stand together with the whole free world in defending our peoples and our values. I have no doubt I have no doubt that my visit here will help the ties and the cooperation between our two peoples grow, grow stronger in security and our ability to keep our people safe in agriculture, in water, in technology, in culture, and in education. At the same time, I want to, thank this to take this chance to repeat our invitation for you to visit Israel. It will be our privilege and great honor to welcome you in Jerusalem, the capital of Israel. We have, no, we have so much to share. It is our duty to face 
the future together. Thank you so very much, Mr. President. I thank the two leaders for their thank statements. You, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes the joint press briefing. Thank you all. Okay, thank you.